Uh, thanks for the introduction, and sorry about the connection trouble. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Seita Maruyama. Uh, I'm presenting uh, Tap and Ghost, a compilation of novel attack techniques against smartphone touchscreens. Uh, this is joint work with Mr. Satoshiro Wakabayashi and my supervisor, uh, Professor Tatsuya Mori, uh, Waseda University. Yeah, uh, Tap and Ghost is an attack against Android smartphones, and the attack connects the attacker's Bluetooth device or Wi-Fi access point to the victim's smartphone. Uh, this attack consists of two techniques. The first one is an attack against NFC-enabled smartphones. The other one is an attack against capacitive touch screens of smartphones. Uh, these techniques can be covertly embedded into common objects such as wood furniture. Now I'll explain how our attack works. Uh, this time we assume that the attacker implements the attack in a wooden table and puts the table somewhere in advance. Uh, in this table, uh, an NFC card emulator and a metal sheet are embedded. When the victim puts their smartphone on the table, uh, this NFC card emulator requests the smartphone to pair with the attacker's Bluetooth device. Then a dialog box pops up on the screen as shown in the slide. Uh, this dialog box says, are you sure you want to pair the Bluetooth device? Uh, the victim will touch the no button because they don't know why this dialog box pops up and they don't want to pair with unknown Bluetooth devices. Uh, however, uh, using the metal sheet embedded in the table, the attacker conducts the attack against capacitive touch screens. Then the attacker can scatter the false touch event uh, as shown by the orange circles uh, in the slide and make the device act as if the other button or ES button had been touched uh, with a certain weight. Uh, so the victim's smartphone is paired with uh, the attacker's Bluetooth device. As a result, the attacker can fully take control of smartphone. Uh, for instance, the attacker can install any applications using a paired Bluetooth mouse. And yeah, uh, here is a short demo video. Um, as you can see, uh, the attacker puts an NFC tag and a metal seat there. Uh, when I put my smartphone on them, a dialog box pops up on the screen and I touch the cancel button. However, the smartphone is tricked into thinking the connect button has been touched. Uh, this toast message indicates that the connect button has been touched, and it means the success of the attack. Uh, in the following slide, uh, I'm going to describe the two attack techniques that compose our attack. Uh, first, uh, I'll explain the latter attack technique, ghost touch generator. Uh, the ghost touch generator is an attack against capacitive touch screens. Among our variety of touch screen technologies, uh, we focus on mutual capacitive touch screens because they are widely used in smartphones. A controller of a mutual capacitive touch screen consists of the grid of the transmitter electrodes, TX, and the receiver electrodes, Rx. Uh, these two types of electrodes are very close together and work as capacitors. So the alternating electric current from the TX electrodes flows into the Rx electrodes. When, uh, when a finger approaches the touch screen, uh, the finger also works as a capacitor, so some of the current uh, also goes into the finger. Thus, the current uh, that flows from Tx to Rx decreases. Uh, by measuring this current change, uh, that touch screen can sense finger touches. And yeah, here is what we did. Uh, as explained before, uh, the touchscreen sense touches 
by measuring the electric current change at the RX electrodes. So uh, if the attacker injects noise signals from the external metal sheet to the RX electrodes, uh, the touch screen detects touches at locations where no real touch is present. Uh, we named this technique ghost touch generator. And yeah, this is a demo video of the ghost touch generator. Uh, as you can see, uh, the touch screen works properly at first. Uh, however, after the attacker starts injecting noise, uh, false touch events are scattered along the line where the real touch is present. We implemented the ghost touch generator and tried to attack seven smartphone models uh, listed in the slide. Uh, as a result, uh, we succeeded in causing false touch event in five out of the seven models. Uh, however, uh, we also found that the noise frequency to cause this malfunction varies by smartphone model. Uh, here's a summary of the ghost touch generator. Uh, this attack technique scatters false touch events uh, on touch screens by injecting intentional noise signals. Uh, however, to mount the attack, uh, the attacker needs to identify the victim's smartphone model in advance. And now, uh, let me talk about the, uh, the other technique. Uh, before using the ghost touch generator, uh, the attacker employs the attack against NFC-enabled smartphones. Uh, this technique requests a victim smartphone to connect to the attacker's device via NFC. Also, this technique enables to retrieve information which is indispensable to the ghost touch generator, uh, such as victim smartphone model. So what is NFC? Uh, NFC is an abbreviation for near field communication. Uh, its communication range is less than 10 centimeters. Uh, taking advantage of this short range, the NFC devices establish a connection just by bringing devices close to each other. NFC is used in various things such as credit cards, uh, smartphones, and smart posters. NFC enabled uh, under the smartphones always look around for nearby NFC devices. Uh, when the smartphone is held over an NFC tag, uh, it performs uh, various operations by reading the data uh, recorded in the NFC tag, uh, such as uh, opening a website, connecting to a Wi-Fi access point, or pairing a Bluetooth device. Uh, before some risky operations, like the Bluetooth pairing, uh, Android OS shows the confirmation dialog box uh, as you saw before. And before uh, using the ghost touch generator, the attacker has to do two things, uh, identifying the victim's smartphone model and requesting to connect to the attacker's device. However, each NFC tag can launch only one operation. So to deal with this problem, the attacker makes use of uh, NFC emulation. Uh, it, emu it enables to emulate an NFC tag and dynamically change its content. So the attacker can launch multiple operations sequentially. The attacker can obtain uh, information and request a Bluetooth pairing by following these steps. Uh, first, the attacker requests to open the attacker's website, and this website identifies the victim's smartphone model from the user agent and tells it to the attacker. Then, the attacker changes the content of NFC tag and requests to pair with the attacker's Bluetooth device. Uh, we call this technique uh, tag-based adaptive ploy. Now, uh, let me summarize the two attack techniques uh, that compose our attack. Uh, first, 
the attacker attacks the victim's smartphone via NFC. In this attack, the attacker can get the smartphone information and re request a Bluetooth pairing. Then the confirmation dialog box pops up. If the yes button on the dialog box is touched, uh, the attack is successful. Next, uh, the smartphone Next, uh, using the smartphone model information, uh, the attacker attacks the touch screen of the victim's smartphone. In this attack, uh, the smartphone is tricked into thinking that the yes button has been touched with about a 50% chance. Uh, consequently, uh, the attacker can fully take control of the smartphone. So let's move on to the feasibility of this threat. Uh, our attack must make use of NFC. The communication range of which is short, so the attacker also succeeds if the victim uses their smartphone uh, near the table near the tabletop in which the attacker has installed the attack device. So to evaluate the feasibility of the attack, we conducted a deceptive study. In the study. Uh, we asked 16 participants to sit at the Marisha's table uh, without telling them and investigated how often the victim's device came within the attack range. And yeah, the last picture shows the wood table that we used in the deceptive study, and the right figure shows the result of the study. Uh, these horizontal bars in the right figure represent the result for each participant, and the x-axis represents the time from when the participant sits at the table. Yeah, so let's take a look at the top bar. Uh, the black part in the bar indicates the time when a participant was vulnerable to the attack, uh, that is, when their smartphone were being unlocked and close enough to the table. To summarize the result, 15 out of the 16 participants presented several opportunities to be attacked uh, within 15 minutes uh, when they used their smartphone at the table. Uh, based on the result of the user study, uh, we evaluated the overall success probability of the attack, and we found that our attack has a 71% chance of success if we assume 30 people take a seat at the table and the attacker can try the attack three times for each person. So we conclude that the threat of the tapping ghost is feasible. In our paper, uh, we also proposed countermeasures. The first countermeasure is to add user approval processes. Uh, before opening a website specified by an NFC tag, the Android OS should get the user's confirmation. Then the attacker wouldn't get information about the smartphone, so they wouldn't be able to conduct attacks against touch screens. The other countermeasure is to detect the malfunction on touch screens. The ghost touch generator generates false touches with characteristic spatial patterns, so identifying these patterns will help to prevent the attack. With the aid of JPSAT-CC, we shared the result of our study with several smartphone manufacturers uh, including Sony Ericsson, Fujitsu, and Sharp. Uh, with one of the manufacturers, uh, we performed an additional experiment using their latest smartphone model and confirmed that the attack was successful on the device. And they are in the process of looking at the at a possible fix. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Tappen Ghost is a new type of attack which exploits NFC and touch screens. This attack connects the attacker's Bluetooth device or Wi-Fi access point to the victim's smartphone. 
And we have confirmed the feasibility of the attack through user studies and have provided uh, possible countermeasures. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'd happy to take any questions. Please sign up for questions and give your name and affiliation. Uh, hi, my name is Nir, a security researcher with Intel. Um, you mentioned spatial characteristics of the attack. To what degree are those inherent in the um, existing touchscreen technology? Are they always horizontal? That's the first part of the question. And then the second part, um, I'll get to. Okay, so your question is why uh, why the uh, for such event uh, appears on the on a line or horizontal line? Uh, yes. Mm, uh, this is because uh, the ghost touch generator only affects uh, the RX electrodes, uh, wi which is touched by a finger. Uh, so, yeah. Ah, sorry. So, mm, yeah. Uh, if when when the finger doesn't touch the touch screen. Uh, the noise from the ghost touch generator uh, only changes the entire voltage of the circuit, so it doesn't change the electric current flow uh, at the RX electrodes. But when the finger is touched, uh, the the when the finger is touched, uh, the RX electrodes uh, it forms a loop circuit. Uh, uh, including RX electrodes, so that is uh, the ghost touch generator is directly connected in parallel with the RX electrodes, which is touched. So, so this is why uh, the the for such events appear on a line or a corresponding uh, RX electrodes. So, so this is also why uh, the RX electro, uh, sorry, the force touch event appears on the horizontal line. Uh, we used uh, the smart touch screen that the RX electrodes are uh, installed horizontally. So this is the risk. Understood. Yeah. And um, had you considered range extension as well of your attack? Yeah. Ah, uh, sorry. Sorry. Could, could you repeat your question? Had you considered ways of extending the range of the attack? Ah, mm, yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, we think uh, this attack can be not only smartphones, uh, but also other important uh, devices uh, which have touch screens, uh, something like uh, electronic voting machine or, <laughs> or ATM or something like that. Uh, and nowadays, uh, uh, many important many devices uh, have uh, touch screens as a user interface. So we are seeking that the ghost touch generator can apply to these machines, uh, which have uh, touch screens. Uh, thank you. Uh, defensively, oh, by, I'm Hillary Orman, and I'm not from anywhere. Um, defensively. Uh, what uh, what would protect the uh, user? How, how much distance? A uh, kind of case? A uh, stack of napkins? What what would work? Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, in this attack, uh, mm, the ghost touch generator attack range is longer than uh, the NFC communication range. So, yeah. Uh, to prevent the attack, uh, the users uh, don't uh, their smartphone uh, close to the uh, table, uh, or that is uh, a lot longer than the NFC communication range. And NFC communication range is about uh, four centimeters. So if the victim uh, put uh, hold their smartphone away uh, longer than four centimeters. Uh, they are safe. If there was a question, you should use the mic, otherwise. 
Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, let's thank the speaker one last time then. Yeah. Thank you so much.